All right, it's time. It's time to wrap this game up. It's time for Armstrong to go down. Now, this is really interesting. Because this last part of the game... Like, uh, the Sundowner and the Monsoon part were the longest part of the game, and now we are at... Like, the last two levels were pretty short, even though uh, the Mission 6 actually went longer than I was expecting. Or, no, Mission 5. Um, but... This one is... Debatably as, just as short as, like, Mission 6, because it's just like a really, very, very small section. And then you fight Armstrong, so... We're in it, we're in here for, like, we're gonna have a couple codec calls, we're gonna have like two encounter, two to three encounters, I think, and then it's gonna be straight into the marathon of the bosses. And that is gonna be, that is gonna be where, it, where this all comes down to. The Armstrong fight is very brutal, depending on, uh, it, I mean, not even depending, it's, it's, it's tough, so. This is why I was trying to save this for its own section. So, here we go. Um, I believe we should just be able to continue and we'll be jumping right into a cutscene. So let's just get right in there. Mr. Ryden, sir? <laughs> Where is she? I'll tell her you've arrived. Over here! That guard is so funny. <laughs> so big now. Hi there, stranger. Hey. You're looking good. Aw, who's your little friend? Oh, it's a long story. Shay? <laughs> good boy! <laughs> like, bro, you know me. What's that? She, do she doesn't know. We don't really have time to catch up. Sorry, not really. It's okay. Follow me. Also, you just killed his best friend, basically. So exactly what kind of... You'll see. His other best friend, you I should say, I guess. You that? Yep. lace ramjet engine I designed. Well, are you in a hurry or not? <laughs> right. Hey. Thanks, Sonny. Hmm? <laughs> I just realized, I wonder is it intentional that all the people who were raised quote-unquote by the Patriots have silver hair? Switch off all cell phones and portable gaming devices. And remember, this is a no smoking flight. <laughs> Roger. Ready for countdown. No time for that. Ignition! Is 
was it? Dang, we ain't got time for a condo. Just blast off. <laughs> I always am just so weird to that. Like, I was like, I like that guard, but like, every single time, it's just because of that pizza eating animation. It's so interesting. At the right place? Gotta be. It's the only base big enough with security contracted out to World Marshal. All right. I'm headed in. Let's go through this is the Forrest. usuals. You have landed in Pakistan? Yep, amazing. That Sunny is really something. <laughs> she is genius. I've not seen her for quite some time. She is well? Pretty good. A lot, uh, sunnier than she used to be for sure. Like day and night from when I first met her. Ah, uh, that was a difficult time, yes? But I'm glad she is better now. It's a good thing I got to her when I did. I used to not like thinking about all the stuff that was going on then. But now I kind of miss those days. Sadness is not like the ocean. Someday, you can drink it all up. It's a Russian saying. People, they always try to beautify the past as a, a way to cope, yes? But I know it was not easy for you. I'm sorry for all the trouble. Nah, I wouldn't have gotten her out without your help. Pretty wild to think that was my first job with you, huh? Duh. Certainly, I was not expecting to work with you for so long. I remember how surprised I was hearing about you starting Maverick. Well, I could not just abandon the PLA. Really, I think I was more surprised you decided to join us. Yeah. Well, you caught me at the right time. I didn't exactly know what to do with myself. <sighs> you know, Boris, I think Sundowner was right in a way. Killing the Patriots wasn't enough to end war. It didn't create this big, happy utopia. But you know what? Seeing Sonny doing so well makes me damn happy the Patriots are gone. Yes, I can imagine. You saved many lives. But now here we are, all over again, huh? Indeed. My apologies for putting you through all this. I knew what I was in for. Riding out. And yeah, they really just kept this the... Is you have landed in War Pakistan? Economy going, huh? Yep, amazing. That Sunny is really something. <laughs> she is genius. I'm oh, not no, that's, pretty that's like, what uh, we just it's a people, but I nah, pretty well. Duh. I remember. Well, really? Yeah, you know, killing, but you yeah, but now I knew. Right. Our enemy has multiple options for striking the president in Pakistan. At the base after landing, while in transit within the country, during the meeting. But if Sundowner's right, they're gonna strike within three hours after you killed him. Which means they're either gonna attack Air Force One, or they'll wait until he lands. I kinda doubt there are any Pakistanis on board Air Force One, though. It's not like in the movies. They never let foreign press on the flight. They could try to shoot it down from afar, I guess. But anything the Pakistan Air Force could deploy would show up on U.S. radar instantly. Which means their best bet at kickstarting another war on terror would be post-landing. They're probably set up for the assassination over at the base. You better get moving. Well, we'll get there. I, I assume they just have one for... So the president's visit to Pakistan. It's meant to build oh, government no, ties, right? Right. You probably know this, but there's a region on their northwest border called FETA. Stands for Federally Administered Tribal Areas. The central government is... Well, let's just say they're not entirely in control of that part of the country. Right. It served as the base for all kinds of armed groups over the years. Uh-huh. The U.S. started staging cross-border raids there at the turn of the century, chasing after combatants that fled out of Afghanistan. The Pakistan army has tried to work with the U.S. to confront them from both sides. But that only escalated anti-American sentiment within the FETA. You can only get away with so many botched civilian strikes, after all. I thought that post-SOP, the U.S., 
pretty much pulled out of Afghanistan. You know, after all that anti-war economy stuff broke out. They did. That put an end to the FATA strikes, but definitely not the anti-American groups. Now their anger's channeled towards the pro-U.S. central government instead. Wouldn't this visit just enrage the FATA groups even more, though? I know President Salam's pretty much on the American side. Yeah, but Salam doesn't care. He's got no interest in dealing with them. He wants to get the FATA back under control, and I guess he wants America's help doing it. And how do his people feel about that? It's pretty much 50-50. A lot of people hate the U.S., for sure. But a lot of others have been directly affected by the anti-government suicide bombings, too. There's definitely some deep-seated support for helping the U.S., but only if it means ending the violence once and for all. Sounds like we could see civil war here any moment. What about their intelligence bureau, the ISI? How do they feel about all this? They haven't commented, publicly. People are always saying how much bad blood there is between the ISI and the civilian government. Oh yeah, there are stories all the time about their involvement with insurgents or terror groups. Depending on how the ISI acts, things over there could change pretty damn quickly. No wonder Armstrong chose this place. It's like one big powder keg. Hey, uh, Ryden? You know, Sam, he looked almost happy. Yeah, crazy <laughs> bastard. He put everything he had into that fight. Wanted to kill me so bad. But once he saw how the fight would turn out, it was like the thought made him smile. Of course, I guess if he didn't mess with you in Denver, you wouldn't have... Well, you know. <laughs> Monsoon would have killed me. I would have never lived to fight Sam. So why'd he do it? Did he think he'd break you for good? Who knows? Maybe waking me up was his plan all along. Yeah, I don't know. But there was definitely something going on. He had plans for you. Because now we'll never know. Yeah, he's gone. But I'm not. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. And there's still work to do. He's dead now. I think they actually do kind of get into that in the Sam DLC. Because there's Blade Wolf and Sam DLC. What do you think President Hamilton's trying to accomplish with this visit? He had I to realize remember. it'll rile up Pakistan's anti-government groups. Hard to say. He could be trying to rebuild America's image with the Pakistani people. You know, pledging financial support and all that. But is President Salam looking for military support? I kind of doubt most Americans would be willing to fund more of that kind of effort. There's a lot of strong sentiment against the war economy. Especially now that the Patriot censorship is dead and gone. Besides, the recession's got a lot of Literally people looking to cut changed. the military's budget. True, but nobody wants to be soft on terror. I mean, one incident's all it takes to make the pendulum swing the other way. One incident? Just like what Armstrong's got in mind. Another possibility is that Hamilton's visiting just to test the waters. You know, see how the American and Pakistani people respond. Hamilton is a pragmatic guy, to put it nicely. To put it not so nicely? He'd strip naked and dance on his desk in the Oval Office if he thought it would boost his poll numbers. Yeah, the, the, I'm literally, like, the only difference between this war economy and the Patriots one is it's, it's not run by AIs. Armstrong used to play football. And nano, well, fully nano machines. Quarterback for the University of Texas, so he must have been pretty good, too. So the star quarterback turns big-time politician, huh? Guess he'd have no problem dodging shoes from angry protesters. Well, it shows he's always been a leader, one way or another. He's obviously not some dumb jock, or this would be a lot easier. Yeah. Too bad he didn't go pro, right? We wouldn't even be having this conversation. Ah, they would have chewed him up and spit him out. He looks strong, for a politician. But nothing too serious. Definitely no wind of destruction. Well, sure. He's not exactly a seasoned fighter, either. Didn't see any action with the Navy. And you know he can't be a cyborg. A public figure couldn't hide that for long, not with current tech. Yeah. He may be an asshole, but he shouldn't be much of a threat. Oh, well, that's he true. wouldn't be in Pakistan, in any case. I'm sure it's all being run by underlings and cronies. No trail to lead back to him. Too bad. I was looking forward to killing him with my own two hands. We can't go around killing civilians just for being evil, Raiden. We're not even at war here. <sighs> just stop the assassination attempt, Raiden. One thing <laughs> I've been thinking? Sam and the rest of the winds were all in the US. Maybe they didn't expect any major resistance over there. Or maybe they left security up to someone else. Maybe so. If it's a cyborg, I hope his insurance is paid off. You know all the rules of football, Kev? Oh, there's a lot of Kev. Huh? 
stuff well, here. Enough to watch it at least. Oh, I know Why? the rules. Just curious. I can never keep track of everything going on. All those rules. It's not that complicated, Raiden. You never watched it? Actually, you ever watched any sport? What can I say? I'm a man of culture, Kev. Give me a good movie over some dumb game any day. <laughs> culture? Oh, the sensitive artsy cyborg type, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Anyway, basketball's more my speed. Get the ball, put it in the net, two points. Oh, yeah, because that's all there is to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, you crack me up sometimes, man. So the president's visit to Pakistan. Okay, right. they never. Uh, okay, the they never said. Now, wouldn't I know? Yeah, he wants. And how they got all sports ball talk? Oh yeah, depend. No one. I know some the rules of some of these sports it's balls. Pakistan already, and so quickly. Ah, science never ceases to amaze me. When it's for peaceful purposes, you mean? <clears throat> well, yes, of course, of course. I must say, though, the engineer behind that RLV craft looked rather Are we young to me. Sung? Yeah, a gifted kid, you might say. I would love a chance to meet her sometime. Why? What would you say to her? Oh, I don't know. It's always just such a stimulating experience. Speaking with scientists from fields other than mine, that is. It often leads to all sorts of new insights, new ideas to work with. And speaking of that, I have yet to meet Dr. Emmerich, too. <laughs> I uh, doubt you two would get along, actually. Oh, you think so? Hmm. Anyway, how are the brains doing? Oh, just fine. Safe and sound in Mexico. Now I just have to get them loaded and en route to Germany. Of course, the real challenge will come after that, I suppose. Yeah. We'll get there when we get there. Indeed. Indeed. Do be careful in the meantime. In Pakistan already? Ah, when it's the, I'm, yeah. I actually I'm don't know why he just thinks he wouldn't get along with now, no. of course. Yeah. Indeed. Hey, Wolf. What did you and Sam talk about before we fought? Nothing of note. He was not one to reveal himself to us. All right. You don't have to tell me. Raiden, I do not feel good about this. Do not allow yourself to be caught off guard. Duly noted. Not noted enough, trust me. Hey, Wolf. What did you no, I wasn't prepared right, when I do. first got to this, <laughs> this part right. for what happened. Hey, Sonny. Fine, thanks. Though I wouldn't call it the smoothest ride ever. You sure that thing's really airworthy? Well, well, what do you expect? You're traveling at a few dozen times the speed of sound. I mean, she operates well within all the projected margins of safety. So, yes, we'll have to work on the turbulence She's only 11? a bit before God we can put turrets on it. But come on. You really can't complain. So it's meant mainly for cargo at the moment? Mm-hmm. We got a contract with COTS, NASA's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services. Mostly handling space deliveries, that kind of thing. We also joined the C-3PO, the Commercial Crew and Cargo Program Office's Passenger Transport Program. So soon we'll have private spacecraft bringing crew to the International Space Station. Wild times we're living in. Well, the space race has been over for decades now. It's no longer something countries engage in for vanity's sake. Still, lots of people are starting to see the industrial value of zero-gravity experiments. Plus, the costs are getting lower and lower with each passing year, to the point where we'll have a serious space tourism industry before long. Yeah, I heard about the space hotel the Russians opened up. But we're still not going any further than orbit, right? Well, one company's planning to have a lunar landing craft complete by 2020. Not ours, though. I'm just hoping we can get to Jupiter while Hal's still alive. Jupiter, huh? Wow, that's pretty far. Oh, hey! How did Earth look from up there? I can't even put it into words. I know I was still under the Carmen line, but it looked exactly like every satellite photo of Earth I've ever seen. No borders, no nothing. Just a whole lot of blue. Hopefully next time around I can take my time and enjoy it. Yeah. But first things first, you know? Yep. Well, good luck, Jack. Right in. Imagine being 11 and building a whole ass spacecraft <laughs> and designing it. You designed that thing too, Sonny? Yeah. Uh-uh. Nobody oh. designed her. Wait. No. Okay, never mind. Yep. She pretty much evolved by herself. Uh, I think I may be missing something here. 
We used a genetic algorithm to make it. Ever hear of that? Yep. They use it to build the cars for bullet trains and stuff. Basically, we start by creating a few different models of aircraft. The data for each design is treated as the genes for a new aircraft. They all get crossbred with each other in virtual space. Eventually, you come up with offspring that exhibit genes from each original design. Offspring? You know, children. Each child then competes with the others for survival in the virtual space. The kids that have the best aerodynamic traits survive and pass on their genes, creating the next generation of aircraft. You get this sort of gene-based evolution across generations, like animals in real life. I'm having a hard time imagining aircraft having kids like that. Anyway, what's with the two wings on the top and the bottom? Oh yeah, the swept wings? They're set up so that the sonic booms they create wind up bashing against each other, cutting down on shockwaves. The idea has been hard to implement due to issues with elevation and wingtip treatment. But thanks to the genetic algorithm, the RLV worked out all the problems herself. Herself, huh? <laughs> Makes it sound like you're more breeder than designer. That's actually pretty cool. This, uh, this, I mean, I haven't seen like practical real world applications for it recently. But like, the demo I always saw was like, you, it was like a vehicle that would have to travel across an obstacle course and you'd watch it like just be really stupid and silly as it evolves. So what happened funny. with the RLV after it dropped me off? Running on autopilot, room, so she'll is. circumnavigate the Earth and head back. Wow, a trip around the world, huh? That's the sort of distance you need to reach orbital velocity. She had to lower her altitude pretty drastically to drop the landing craft. So getting back up for her was a pretty rough trip. Rough? How? In terms of damage to the craft, I mean. Running in ramjet mode helps conserve fuel a lot, so she's good there, but... Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Oh, no, no. All in the name of peace, right? Besides, it made for a good load experiment. I'm kind of surprised it actually worked, actually. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just teasing. Don't be so serious. So what kind of engine is this lace thing? Yeah, what is that? It's short for liquid air cycle engine. A lace uses liquid hydrogen to chill and liquefy the oxygen in the air. The reaction between the liquefied hydrogen and oxygen creates propulsion. On this RLV, the lace is combined with ramjets for maximum efficiency. Once the solid rocket boosters lift her off and bring her to Mach 3, she switches to ramjet propulsion mode. In the meantime, she's taking in and liquefying oxygen from the air. Once there's enough, the lace is ignited. If it wasn't for that hybrid engine, it would have been pretty rough for an RLV to pull that trick that it did. You know, lowering its elevation just long enough to drop a landing craft. Well, I'm impressed. If it wasn't for you, I'd still be on your side of the world. <laughs> and I wouldn't even be here if not for you. Don't forget that, okay? A lot of people appreciate what you've done for them. I'll try not to. So what kind of engine? It's okay. late on this once in the if it was well, I'm <laughs> don't I'll try. Vaguely gives me vibes of like when you get all the hero but the Ezo stuff and Mass Effect. So there's one thing I still don't get. If World Marshals making it look like Desperado hacked their cyborgs, wouldn't that damage their reputation? Maybe they can hide the fact that they're involved in terrorism that way, but wouldn't they still be liable for the fact that they, you know, got hacked? They probably would, yeah. But the only thing they're looking for here is a profit. Maybe they need to demonstrate neglect if they're going to make any money off of this. How so? Well, Kevin dug up some intel. Half of the contractors stationed here didn't get their contracts renewed at the end of March. The U.S. government rewrote their contract with Marshall earlier. Had to cut military spending after all, with the recession going on. And so they'll say the contractors were spread too thin to prevent the hacking. Exactly. And that'll only encourage the army to boost their Marshall headcount. I can't say if the military is directly involved in this assassination attempt or not, but... Well, what happened to the contractors they laid off? Who knows? Hopefully they found work. But work like that isn't exactly easy to come by. Ever since the war economy died down, after the Patriots, life's been pretty much hand-to-mouth for a lot of contractors. Huh. When you put it that way, I can almost understand what Sundowner was saying. Yeah, but... Starting a war just to boost your profits? That's crazy, Courtney. If there's no work for contractors out there, it's time to find another industry to work in. Not that I have any right to say that, but... 
Oh, come on, Raiden. Maybe you like to fight, sure, but you're not that twisted. Yeah, well, in any case, <laughs> I better get to work. Riding out. What's up? I mean, isn't he, though? Did we not okay. hear some of his Save ripper complete. speeches? Don't let your guard down, okay? Alright, let's just get the scissors. We got the sword, the box is gonna be useful as always. We're not gonna use any recovery items. In fact, we might have to sit like. It'll be interesting. I. Uh... I'm thinking. Do I wanna use healing items for Metal Gear Excelsius? I think the middle section. I don't mind. Um. I wouldn't mind doing the middle section without deals, because that part's kind of like its own segment. <laughs> the Excelsius part is definitely one of the more annoying. Just for fun. See that? Their EXIF codes show up as unaffiliated. Wait, Marshall has the security contract for this base. Why would they have their cyborg set to the same illegal EXIF code as Desperado? It's evidence against them. No, it's their alibi. They're making it look like Desperado hacked their soldiers on site because everyone knows Desperado has a contract with... The Pakistani rebels. Oh, but if we go public with the Desperado-Marshall connection... Won't matter. Not when they've got this nice big foreign threat all cooked up and ready to serve. The media and the public won't be able to resist. Remember WMDs in Iraq? Damn it, you're right. It's another slam dunk. What about any humans on the base? Marshall only handled security. Dead, most likely. Or brain jacked, if they needed them to keep up appearances. Huh. They'd never publicize what airport the president was flying into. Not in this region. And almost no one would have access to an outside line for security reasons. It wouldn't be difficult to keep things hush-hush. At least until Air Force One arrives. I'm heading for the control tower. If I can destroy the antenna array, the U.S. military will know something's wrong. Good idea. Be careful. Sam's gone. And I blew the winds of destruction away. I'll be fine. Looks like an anniversary. All right, now, if you're looking for a little humanoid dwarf gecko, I think they're over here? In the rocks, I thought. Maybe over uh, behind these other rocks? I thought that there was something out here. Maybe not. Alright, well, anyway, let's just go into the base. So, we have to. Right, there's no time here. to worry about the soldiers. Get to the control tower. I think these guys just fly away. If you wait long enough.
Alright, now we got this fun guy. Like, I don't think you really have to... ...kill them. As, uh, Boris was just alluding to, I think you can just run towards the thing. I don't know if that actually locks you in an encounter. But... Um, the part that was always hard... ...for this was the part after this hangar. Yeah, this part It's pretty simple, I think Hopefully I don't fuck it up now that I've said that, but I don't know what this is, but I'm taking it Oh, I didn't even have that. Oh, okay. Picking up stuff I've m missed on my playthroughs. I guess I'm missing four of those. Okay, now I think you we uh, run up a plane or something here. Yeah, we jump on this. Backtrack, run up the boxes. Alright, that guy is coming back. I think there's actually an achievement for if you just do this whole section. I might not even have it actually. To do this whole section without getting alerted anybody. Jump off the airplane thing again. Ah, oh, you fucker! Go ahead. It's like we're, we're definitely not getting that uh, achievement or whatever, if that's the thing that I don't have. That right there fucked it up. I didn't think you'd see me up top, on top of the thing. Come on. There we go. Yeah, we, we, we will need all of those. I think we're already full, are we not? Five, five yeah, we're... okay. The also, the Excelsius fight actually isn't that bad. It's just the part that they spawn the geckos, I think, in my opinion. Okay, now this one was the, always the hardest part. I fucked up the the hammer guy on that last part, but this is the this is the true test. I was trying to stealth through this. Yeah, 
because I think this actually alerts the hammer guys. I run off and I get in the box. Yep. Okay. Ooh, I'll take that. <laughs> slice, slice. Oh, I know the man in the boxes now, actually. Ah, it's fine. It's whatever. Alright. Now, before I walk there, we have one last set of... Yeah, uh, yeah, here's man in box. Yeah, one last set of codec calls, and then, uh... I'll probably, actually, no, I will do some of the Armstrong ones. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's make sure. Ryder, what is the status at the base? Overrun with Desperado cyborgs, as expected. Security's still pretty lax, though. Yes, I don't think they're anticipating another cyborg to show up. They are, after all, all the way out in Pakistan. Doubtful there will be any cyborgs here, except at the base, forces hired by the US. And more doubtful they are expecting a cyborg to drop in at Mach 23. <laughs> yeah. Still, they've got to know I'm here. Sam was smart enough to figure out that I'd take that launch vehicle. Yes, but they couldn't have sent back up to this base within three hours after Sundowner died. Perhaps they could have arranged it so the plan was scrapped if Sam died. But if they already occupied the base, then there is no longer any cancelling out. Probably not. Which means we've pretty much already won. No. Sam's dead. The winds of destruction, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> too. And none of their standard cyborgs or UGs have a chance against me. No, certainly not. Though I wonder who is behind this operation anyway. Not Armstrong? Well, yes, but who is running things at the base? The Senator would never be there himself. But this is too elaborate an operation to direct remotely. Yeah. No amount of network tech could take the place of a command structure on the ground. Gotta be someone else from World Marshal, I guess. A cyborg, perhaps. One with specialized compact body, like Sundowner and the others. I do not mean to alarm you, but... Use caution. Yeah. Copy I that. was so expecting there to be like a surprise cyborg that we never heard about. Ryder, there is no time to worry about the soldiers. Get to the control tower. So the president's visit to Pakistan. Right. Right. Like, I was like, I think I did listen to some of these because I, what about this is one uh, where I didn't remember about all the codec calls at the first playthrough. But, um, and like how Metal Gear works and all that. But like, yeah, I think once I did, well, maybe I did. Because I do remember like expecting something that wasn't Armstrong. In Pakistan already. Ah, when it's <clears throat> I'm yeah. I want. Oh, it opens. Oh, <laughs> anyway. it's hard to remember what happened. Indeed. What ten years ago? Yeah, ten years. Oh, wolf, no response. Uh oh. Hey, so how's Atacon? Oh yeah. About time he starts thinking about marriage, isn't it? I don't know if he is or not, but either way, no dice yet. He likes to go on about how nobody would ever be happy with them long term, but it doesn't seem like he has too much trouble keeping busy on Saturday nights, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, believe it or not, he was a huge geek back when he was younger. Maybe, but even so, he's still a nice guy. I doubt he was ever that lonely. Yeah, I suppose. But he really changed once he got into his 30s. Got a lot more attractive. Yeah, but he still has this really bad habit of keeping the ladies at arm's length. It winds up making him look really awkward sometimes. I really wish he'd just pick someone and settle down already. Bro, well, you're 11. <laughs> Easier said than done, I guess. So what about you, Sonny? Uh, me? Well, I... I've got science. That's all the love I need. <laughs> Sounds like you've got your own problems in that department. It could be a lecture. Hey, Ryden! You gonna keep that pup after this mission? That... Oh, you mean Wolf? Yeah. He's kind of a cutie. You think so? I don't think he's really the cuddling type, Sonny. Plus, he's not exactly mine. He... Just keeps following me around. Oh yeah? Can I have him? If they're asking. I don't mind. But I don't know about him. He's kind of his own uh, animal. I check with him first. 
It's his call, not mine. Oh. Ah, oh, well. What? He'd probably say yes, though. I mean, he seems to like you a hell of a lot more than me. Really? Oh, I sure hope so. Thanks a lot, Raiden. <laughs> Wouldn't even shake for me. <laughs> Sonny, I've lost contact with Wolf. You... really? Oh, I hope he didn't run off because he didn't want to live with me. No, I called him first. I don't think it's that. I've got some things to take care of first. But I'll look for him when I have some time. All right. Thanks, Raiden. He's higher up on the list. And not Raiden. a safe slot. I heard Armstrong's using the name Operation Tecumseh for the assassination attempt. It makes sense. What do you mean? Tecumseh was a Native American tribal leader, a symbol of resistance against the new settlers. Guess you know your U.S. history better than me. This is basic stuff, Raiden. As legend has it, Tecumseh put a curse on the U.S. presidency. Every 20 years, whoever is elected president was doomed to die before he served out his term. And it played out that way, too. From 1840 to 1960, that's exactly what happened. Ah, a fitting code name then. Yep. It hasn't worked since 1980, though. Ran its course, huh? Didn't last as long as the bald hairy rule in Russia, at least. Besides, Hamilton wasn't elected in the right year <laughs> for it to take effect, right? Wouldn't Armstrong be the one elected in 2020 if this works? Well, I'm sure the name is meant to be a bit tongue-in-cheek. Not like how the U.S. Army names their ops. <laughs> Still, pretty bad karma. Just be careful, Raiden. Maybe it's hey, more Raiden, than seems. there's something I've been meaning to mention. What's up? Well, they're telling me someone broke our front gate at the plant. Oh. That's an electronic lock, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I thought it was open. It wasn't. <laughs> but you're strong enough to pry it open if you wanted to. Well, I... I didn't think I put that much force into it. You ask me, I think you need a sturdier gate. That's what I told security. Nice. Anyway, we'll send you an invoice for the reinforcement work. What? Not to mention the repair costs. Double what? Oh, come on, Sonny. It was an accident. Man, Rose is gonna kill me. Sonny, I've lost you. I don't think right, I've got... Go. All right. Uh, what's Courtney got? So, Raiden, let me get this straight. Armstrong wants to kill the president and pin the blame on Desperado? That's what it looks like, yeah. You think it'll work? I mean, assuming he succeeded, what would be Desperado's motive for killing Hamilton? It's not like they can come out and say, well, we just wanted more wars to profit from. No. The only alibi I can think of for them is that their client set them up. The Pakistani government's on friendly terms with the U.S. right now. But a lot of people aren't so happy with them about that. There are tons of anti-government groups in this country. Any one of them could have an interest in killing the president. And Marshall wants people to think that one of these groups hired Desperado? That. Or maybe they're setting it up so this is all linked to the coup in Abkhazia. That was headline news in the West. Desperado's name was in the media all over the place. Yeah. The angle was always Desperado shacking up with yet another anti-government force. Pakistan's got a lot more than just a bunch of random anti-government forces, though. Like the ISI, the Intelligence Bureau. Anyone who watches the news knows how shaky their ties are with the civilian government. You think they'll have the ISI be Desperado's client? Well, I'm sure the ISI would deny it. But it's not like simply issuing a denial would stop anything. Remember Iraq? Yeah, I've heard all the rumors about the ISI's involvement with terror groups. If Hamilton dies, the U.S. can join the Pakistani government, declare war against the ISI. And there's one big difference between Iraq and Pakistan. Pakistan does have WMDs. Nukes. But that was just a couple of tests 20 or so years ago. They can't reach the U.S. with... I'm not talking about firing an ICBM at the U.S. or unleashing a Metal Gear. All they have to do is remind us that the tech could fall into terrorist hands. Oh, yeah. That'd be enough to scare the entire country, I guess. Yep. Scare them enough that the U.S. would have to do something. And then the war economy would come humming right back to life. No patriots required. Christ. All they right. already I'm had the move. war. There's fucking contractor security. <laughs> There's still the war economy. I don't think I've asked about Pakistani food yet, Courtney. More food talk? 
I didn't know you were so interested, Raiden. Hey, knowing the food can help you learn a lot about the local culture, <laughs> you know. Raiden, I told you that. So? Pakistani <laughs> food. <sighs> yeah, yeah. All right. So Pakistan's had cultural links with India for centuries, right? They're neighbors, after all. And as a result, the two countries share a lot of culinary traditions. You've got your curries, your naan, samosas, pakoras. Oh, all so good. For the most part, that's all the same. The locals might be able to spot the difference. Well, samosas. But a lot of American restaurants and put pakora. India and Pakistan pretty much in the same bowl, so to speak. What are samosas? Spiced <gasps> potatoes and other yummy stuff fried in a flour shell. Sometimes they're spiced with curry. That's the kind I like best. But I thought India and Pakistan didn't really get along. They had at least three armed clashes in the 20th century alone. They did. I mean, that's why they have nukes in the subcontinent now. It's a shame. You see how similar their taste in food is. It just seems like they should get along better. Yeah, well, not too rare for neighboring countries to have problems. If nothing else, they have to compete for the same common resources. Yeah, but isn't that why we have politicians? To peacefully manage that kind of stuff? <laughs> You know how few politicians out there actually give a crap about serving their country? Anyway, sorry. This isn't exactly the light conversation I was expecting. Better worry about the president for now. We can go and grab samosas another time. Sure. But don't forget about the Nepales, fertilized duck eggs, and Guyanese seafood, too. We'll wash it all down with sake and Abkhazian wine. It's gonna be a killer spread. Yeah, sure thing. That'd be sick. All right. Well, since I know this last okay. part is save complete. Don't all cutscenes in the big okay? boss rush. We're gonna end this uh, part here, the section here, and then we will continue, hopefully, with just a full boss rush section for the whole Armstrong part. So I'm gonna be right back, and I'll see you in the next section.